Hello friends, my name is Suboptimal and I'm an Indian American software engineer learning the British accent because I want to get into Hogwarts. In this video, we'll go over why I decided to switch from TypeScript to C++ as the language of choice for building a shader game engine. But first, what is a shader game engine? Let's start with examples. Here's an example of a circle turning into a square. Here's an example with smooth cell division. Here's an example with MGUI sliders. Here's an example where I halt reload shaders. Here's an example with multiple post-processing effects. And finally, here's an example that transitions between multiple types of Voronoi noise. I've made many more examples, but I'm going to cut it short here. If you want to see all of them, you should follow me over on Twitter, Threads, or Blue Sky. That's where I post all my work in progress demos. A shader game engine is a simplified engine that exists solely to help me write, edit and iterate on shaders quickly. I started working on it because I hit a limit with what's possible with the GLSL shader extension in VS Code. The extension worked very well for some of my earlier projects like sign distance fields, Perlin noise and ray marching, but it became unwieldy when worked on multi-pass shaders like the Sable style renderer I made a few months ago. The goal of my shader engine is to essentially solve all these problems. It should allow me to write GLSL shaders, hot reload them, them, smoothly transition shaders, toggle multiple post-processing effects, and also support multi-pass shaders with ease. It's currently written in C++ and uses the SFML library. In the future, I plan to switch the graphics layer to WebGPU, as the latter provides compute shader support. Before committing to the decision of making a custom shader game engine, I did try to find an alternative, but none of them fit my use case perfectly. Sebastian Lag's animation tool was cool. I tried it out when I was learning Unity a few years ago, but Unity has had multiple missteps with the community. I didn't want to invest my time learning a game engine that might not even exist in a few years. The next option was Artificial's Motion Canvas, which was absolutely amazing and showed a lot of promise. But to be honest with you, I didn't want to write animations in the abomination of a language that is JSX. 3Blue1Brown's Manim was another option, but it required me to invest time in learning the Python ecosystem. This would have been a strong option if I had even a smidgen of interest in AI. Unfortunately, I find working on AI to be rather dull. Finally, their Shader Toy. This came the closest to being my go-to option, but it didn't have built-in customization tools to help me pick colors or change parameters parameters easily. All these tools were essentially great options, but none of them made sense for my use case. So I decided to make my own custom shader game engine. The next question I had was which programming language to use. I was deciding between TypeScript and C++ and ranked them on five categories in the context of graphics programming. Personal experience, external libraries, state management, performance, and graphics community. C++ was the clear winner. The strongest reason for me to use TypeScript over C++ was my experience with the JS ecosystem. My entire career, from professional work to YouTube, has been in the JavaScript world. I know how to use modern React. I know the ins and outs of NPM. I know how to set up prettier for formatting. I know how to use Tailwind CSS for simple designs. I know how to write tests in Jess. I've made a volume renderer to display MRI data on the web. I made a slime mode simulation in TypeScript and WebGPU. And because of that, TypeScript was actually the first choice for me when writing the shader game engine. I built the first prototype in React.js and Regal, a library that makes it easy to work with WebGL. But that decision quickly soured on me, and that's what I want to discuss in this video. 
NPM is great for package management, but the main problem is that there are no packages worth managing when building graphics tools on the web. Dat.gui is usually a good starting point. I even used it for some of my previous projects, but it hasn't been updated in nearly three years. TweakPane is a little bit of a better alternative, but it doesn't have the ability to do complex tabs or window management. You can try pairing it with other JS libraries that solve these problems, but then you run into issues with state management. More on that later. Don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful to the open source contributors that work on these JavaScript tools. But to be honest, I'm looking for sort of a one-stop shop solution for all these kinds of tools. And in C++ land, that's Dear Imgui. It has all the graphics tools you will ever need built into the framework itself. It also has open source plugins for tools like gizmos and node graphs. It's used by nearly all the big game dev companies, many of which also provide monetary support. Blizzard, Nvidia, Valve, Adobe, Epic, Google, and id Software to name a few. Because of this, it's very well maintained, has a huge community, and is updated on a weekly basis. And for that reason, C++ comes out on top in this category. Now let's talk about state management. In React, you only re-render when the state changes. There are lots of benefits to this approach when building large-scale web apps, but after taking a few steps in this direction initially, I could immediately see that my future would be filled with setting up and refactoring use state variables, lifecycle hooks, and on-click handlers. In my case, it wasn't a good trade-off. In Imgui, you re-render the entire UI every frame. All you need to do is define a global state struct that holds a few boolean values. You can change the state of these variables anywhere in your app, no need for lifecycle hooks or on-click handlers. The entire UI will just re-render on the next frame. And that essentially makes working with state much easier in C++. Now, I always knew JavaScript was slow, but I didn't realize exactly how slow until Microsoft started rewriting the TypeScript compiler in Golang. This was huge news. For one, they didn't use Rust or C Sharp. And on the other hand, it made the TypeScript compiler nine to 10 times faster. They got a 3x speed up from a direct one-to-one -one port in Golang. And they found another 3x speed up from using multi-threading. Personally, I don't want to work in a language where the ceiling for performance is on the floor. That's JavaScript. Even though I don't currently utilize many of the performance features of C++, knowing that I have the option to if I need it, essentially puts my mind at ease. The last reason is that despite what every other YouTuber says about being language agnostic, your programming language of choice actually matters. It makes perfect sense if you just think about it for about five seconds. Suppose a hiring manager is screening candidates. One candidate says their programming language of choice is Python. So immediately they think they must know PIP and virtual ENV or UV for package management, rough for linting, writing simple scripts. Maybe they're familiar with AI libraries like NumPy or PyTorch. Maybe they're familiar with backend tools like Flask or Django, etc. You make a lot of assumptions when somebody says what their main programming language is. So no matter how you slice it, your programming language of choice will shape your career. And the programming language of choice for all graphics programmers is C++. I mean, just check out this poll in r slash graphics programming on Reddit. Clearly, C++ is a language of choice. So I knew that if I wanted to essentially progress my career in graphics programming, I needed to spend at least a little bit of time learning and understanding C++ and what better way to do so than by doing it on a personal project like a shader game engine. So in summary, I chose C++ over TypeScript because C++ has MGUI, the one-stop shop for building graphics tools. Managing global state in a render loop is easier in C++. C++ has a higher ceiling for performance. And finally, because C++ is a language of choice for graphics programming. Now, I'd like to hear from you guys. What do you think about this? shader game engine that I'm working on. Do you think I made the right call or should I have stuck with TypeScript? Is there anything that I missed in my analysis of these two languages? And finally, are you like me and you try to like do this weird sort of analysis before making a decision or do you try to stick with one language for most of your project? I'd love to talk about anything related to C++, TypeScript and graphics programming down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.